Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friendly professor from Johnson County Community College. And in this short screencast, we're going to debrief on hands-on exercise 2.2 at the end of chapter two. This responds to the click of this submit button. If my name, email, and phone values are empty, then I'm given this message, please fill in all fields. And by the way, the message that the browser gives you is a little bit different depending upon what browser you're working in. I'm working in Firefox right now. But if I have all three fields filled in and I click submit, then I get the thank you message. If I forget one value, then I get the please fill in all fields message. So all three fields must be filled in in order to get the thank you message. Let's look at the code. Here is my form and notice that there is no action or method attribute in the opening form tag. So the data is not being submitted anywhere. This is just an exercise to learn JavaScript. I have three input boxes with type equals text that create these three boxes that I'm typing into. I also have an input type equals button that creates the submit button and its ID is submit. And because submit is a type of input element and it's also the value here, I think this is a bit confusing. So I'm going to ID it something else as btn submit. So every ID equals something value must be unique per page. We know this from styling the CSS, and we also are getting really familiar with the ID equals something attribute in JavaScript because that's the unique identifier for that element. Now, if I reference this submit button as btn submit here, then in my event listener, I'm also going to have to reference that unique element by ID, btn submit. Now let's look at the function that's inside these script tags and it's named submit info. It's being called by this event listener. When the click event happens on btn submit, we're running the submit info function. But what does a submit info function do? Well, it declares three variables. The first variable name is name. Again, look how many times there's name throughout the, the code. So to me, that's not a great variable name. Choose something like name info. And then if I use name info, when I refer to that variable later on, I've got to give that variable name the same name, obviously. The variable name info is being set to this element, name input. So that's the input element. The email variable is being set to the element that's ID'd as email input. And the phone variable is being set to the element that's ID'd as phone input. In other words, name info, email, and phone refer to these three boxes, these three input boxes on the form. Now we're saying in our next statement, name info dot value and email dot value and phone dot value all must be true. If they're all true, then we run what's after the question mark. This is like a very condensed if then else statement. We could shorten this a little bit by, instead of using the dot value property here after our variable name, we could simply go up to the variable name and pull out the value property from these input boxes here, and then we wouldn't have to use the value property behind our variable names. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna shorten up that line by eliminating the value property from the variable names and just set these variable names to the value property instead of to the element itself. Now I have, if name and email and phone are all true, and when are they true? They're true when they have a value. If even one does not have a value, when I click submit, I'm getting the false part of the statement, which is after this colon. Window alert, please fill in all the fields. So this statement is one long statement, it's checking, are all parts true? All parts must be true when we use the AND operator. If name info is filled in and email info value is not null and phone value is not null, then we're going to say thank you. If any one of these evaluates false, then we're going to do the false part of the statement. And by the way, I think the book has you just code this with alert method without the window.object. But while we're still learning about objects, the window object, the document object, the console object, I think it's very helpful to have the entire object dot method name there so that you can see the whole entire statement. If this, this, and this are all true, if they're all filled in, then we are going to give the user the thank you message. That's the true part. 
if any one of them is false, if any one of them is not filled in, then we're going to run the false part of the statement, which is another window alert to please fill in all fields when the BTN button is clicked. Thank you.